Okay, so now we're looking at slide five. We call him Cuddles, which is really cool because my cat's name at home is Cuddles. So, here we go. I've read that humans can't survive without water, but for me, I can't survive without my pet, Cuddles. Cuddles has been a part of my family for a couple of years now. He's grown into quite a beast, weighing nearly 400 pounds. He's enormous and loud, but he has a heart as big as the moon. Cuddles may be an unusual pet, but he's the very best pet on the planet. Besides being protective and an excellent hunter, Cuddles is also very handsome. He has a thick golden fur and long hair that surrounds his chest and face. I love his wild, wispy whiskers. They're long and have a black spot at each root. When I take him for his evening walks, his long tail with its black tassel at the end swings side to side. Cuddles' teeth, eyes, and love for my family are huge. You might be wondering how a pet as wonderful as Cuddles came into our lives. Well, two summers ago, my family went on a vacation to Sub-Saharan Africa. The highlight of the trip was going on a safari and riding in an open air Jeep. My mom had warned me about bringing snacks on the safari because she thought they would attract the animals, but I snuck a few granola bars in my backpack just in case I got hungry during the expedition. Well, I guess my mom was right because those granola bars must have smelled mighty delicious. Without even knowing it, a tiny cub climbed right into my pack while we were photographing zebras and giraffes. We headed to the airport right after the safari, so I didn't discover Cuddles until we got home. And when I pulled him out of my backpack, he was a golden fluff ball. His fur felt so soft as feathers, and I fell in love with him in the instant I looked into his big brown eyes. And by the twitch of his long whiskers, I could tell that he was falling for me too. Cuddles became a part of our family instantly. At first, I made a cozy bed for him in my bedroom, but it wasn't long before he grew to be nearly 30 inches tall. So we got to work on making a habitat for him in the backyard. His outside habitat includes heated rocks to remind him of the warm African savanna, a stream and waterfall, and even a cave. We, we practice his tricks outside and recently he mastered the skill of jumping through a flaming hula hoop, but my mom isn't a fan of that trick. He also plays a mean game of hide and go seek he uses his stalking skills to move quietly to each hiding spot. And one time he hid in my brother's bed when my brother discovered Cuddles. I'm pretty sure that just like Cuddles' deep knee quaking roar, you could hear my brother scream for miles. Okay, go to slide six and we'll finish it up. We go for walks in the evening when Cuddles is most active. He is very social when we roam around the neighborhood. He's especially fond of cats. I think he'd like them to join his pride. Although Cuddles would happily enjoy getting a pat on his back from anyone, most people go running into their houses when they see us coming down the street. Most of the time, he doesn't mean to scare anyone. However, once he did have a run-in with a school bully, he walked right up to him flashed his teeth and gave a low growl. And I haven't seen that bully since. Caring for an animal as unique as Cuddles isn't always easy. I'm constantly trying to feed him chicken and beef to fulfill my carnivore's appetite. Oh, and his stinky breath that smells um, a bit like a garbage dump could bring an elephant to his knees. But Despite the fact that he's unusual and he causes terror to course through the, our neighbor's veins, he's my pet and he is the very best pet there is. Okay, let's look at slide seven. Okay, could you figure out what that pet was even though they never said that that pet is a lion? lion. Did you think it was anything else before you heard more details? What did you think? Tiger? 
cheetah, okay? When I heard the 400 pounds, I thought it was an elephant or a hippo. Elephant or hippo, yes, 400 pounds is pretty big. I thought it was a tiger. Tiger, anybody else? So, was there a pretty distinctive phrase that made you realize, oh, this is a lion? What was it? Um, for me, it was the one about the fur and the whiskers and the eyes and stuff like that. Okay. It said it had big golden fur that went around his head and his chest. Mm -hmm. That's for me, too. I was like, oh, there's only just one animal that really has that, right? Okay. Let's look at slide seven. <clears throat> it says, critical components, characteristics of descriptive writing. So yesterday we talked about a good descriptive writer can really tap into your imagination, imagination and your creativity as well as your five senses. senses, right? So in this first box it says the five senses, sight, sound, touch and smell, and taste. So what examples can we think of? And I would love for us to go back and actually look at the text and copy text evidence over but it will not let you copy and paste from that slide, or we couldn't earlier. So let's just talk about that. Is there a phrase that comes to mind when you think of something that activated your sense of touch? The fur rabbit gets soft yes. feathers. Fur. fur is soft as feathers. What about smell? I'm really sensitive to smells, and there's a, something that stuck out. Like his breath smells yes. Like his breath smelled like a what? Do you remember? A garbage dump. A dump. And also they talked about feeding him chicken and beef, and I'm sure it was raw chicken and beef, and I don't like the smell of raw meat, so that really made my senses come alive. What about sound? Someone that hasn't answered yet. Yes? Um, he growled at the school bully. He growled a little growl at the school bully. He growled another time, too, in the story. Do you remember what it was, Maggie? Yes, growled in the bed. What about sight? We haven't talked about sight. Yes. Um, his big. She was talking about his big brown doe eyes and his teeth and all his features. So you could imagine that. What about when the neighbors were outside and he was walking in the walking in the evening? The neighbors saw him. That was a visual sight too. Um, we don't taste the lion, but. Is there anything in there that brought your sense of taste awake? Probably one spot, maybe. We talked about it just a little bit. He's a carnivore. What does that mean? Um, they eat meat. Eats meat. So, what did he feed him again? Chicken and meat. They also talked about the granola bars. Chicken and beef, yes. And they mentioned the granola bars, too. Good. Okay, let's talk about the engaging voice. So, our writer doesn't tell us if it's a girl or a boy. But an engaging voice, now we can't really hear his voice. You heard my voice as I read his words, but he has his own voice. And that just means the way and the style he writes lets his personality come out. There's something about the way he writes, and I can't find a specific example to tell you, but whoever wrote this seems really friendly to me. Just, you get a, it's easy to read, he's very descriptive, or she's very descriptive. A friendly voice. What about, um... What's anything else that might have stood out to you? The way he phrased things or maybe, could you kind of decipher maybe an age that this person might have been? Um, from how he did, or the person didn't really listen to their mom when they said don't bring snacks and granola bars and stuff like that made me think they were younger. Yeah, true. And sometimes older people don't carry snacks anyway, so he might have been younger. What do you think? I thought you, you was that what you were going to say too? Nine to ten, is that what you think? And we don't have any proof of that, but he gives us a feel about his personality. Is there anything else about the personality that stands out to you or the style he writes in? He uses a lot of figurative language in there, and that's one of the things we're going to talk about in a second. So let's look at vivid, lively details. What does vivid mean? If something's very vivid, is it dull or is it bright? It's bright. Very bright and bold. So vivid details, lively details which helps to set a mood. Is there anything that stood out to you that made you picture in your mind or gave you a feel of the mood of the scene that they were describing? Yes. Um, when I thought about the cub jumping into her backpack, it filled me with a bit of excitement and like what's gonna happen next and stuff like that. And so it created a mood for me. Okay, good, I like that. Anything for you? 
They talked a, bit, a little bit about the habitat in the backyard and how those things, when they were describing, like they put the warm rocks to remind him of the savanna and the waterfall. That created a mood for me. I could really picture that in my mind. It was very vivid. What about show rather than tell? Now, we did show me sentences last week. So if you're showing your sentence rather than telling, one of your examples we did in class was, I think, my dad's funny. Okay, but if you told that sentence, you would have to describe how your dad's funny. Did they tell us anywhere in that story that that was a lion? Mm -hmm. They could have said their story very quickly and said, I have a pet lion. And that would have not shown us anything. Of course, we already know what a lion looks like. But even though they never said this pet was a lion, we probably have a very descriptive, unique, if you all sketched it out, your sketches are probably gonna look very similar because they described it so completely. Um, so that's showing instead of telling. What about the action verbs? What verbs did they describe in there? Do you remember any actions that took place? I remember several. When yes. they were, the lion jumped into her backpack or when they were walking down the street. Yes, and the open air jeep. I can see him just bouncing down the dirt road and dust flying everywhere. What about when brother got in his bed? Mm. I imagine he jumped out of that bed. Screaming and or when they took him for walks. And the bully, what might the bully have done when he growled at him? Uh, ran away like a little girl. He probably had actions, yes. Okay, figurative language, hyperbole, simile, metaphor, personification. Would you like to describe what any of those things are? Anybody know what a hyperbole is? You do know, you just probably don't remember that you know. Yeah. Uh, so hyperbole is when you have a really big exaggeration. Right. He talked about his heart being as big as the moon. Because his heart be really be as big as the moon, mm -hmm. not quite. That's an exaggeration. What about a simile? Did you see any similes or metaphors? Personification is when you give a non-human human, human characteristics. characteristics, right? Okay, so that is slide seven. Thank you.